Welcome to Audio Star Productions, and we are Tony and Weston deep inside the samples. And hey, today, Weston. Good how are you doing, Tony? I'm doing well. Good to be here on Audio Star Productions. And today we've got music uniquely yours playing in the background. It's a demo of Tony's uh, ambient uh, album he's got going on. You can check this out at our website and um, purchase it for licensing. So, Tony, we're going to be going over uh, over strings in this uh, video, correct? Yeah, working with some orchestral elements. Uh, strings are are a big part of, of orchestra work, uh, horns and timpani, you know, percussions and things like that. But but this one I want to touch on strings. Uh, and you know how to make that string sample you know kind of come alive and feel a little more human uh, and you know sound a little more like you know a, a true string player is, is in that pit you know playing playing the instrument um, I think it's important that you know strings feel feel like like they're human right you know, unless you know you're doing like a tr you know just a pure electronica piece and you want that really electronic string sound going on but even then I think you can treat it you know with some expression and dynamics um, which is important in music so that everything isn't just one level sounding the same um, so yeah you know, these are some some of the the tricks I do uh, with strings and again you know, I'm not advocating you know any particular da or, or uh, these are just techniques uh, you can apply to the system that you have. Oh, here's some of your music coming up. Yeah, we got my music going. It's got some strings in there too. Nice, nice. I, um, you know, we don't pr promote particular DAWs. We both have our own DAW that we like to use. Yeah. Tony, Tony does Cakewalk, and I'm in Pro Tools. In the, you know. It's just about knowing your DAW. Yes, that's the key. It's, it's knowing, you know, knowing, knowing what you're working with, you know, um, you know, and spend, spending time with your sample library or your DAW uh, or your synth synthesizer module, and really learning how you know, how to tweak it, and get underneath the hood, as they say. And and those are different different uh, days of of understanding your DAW. We can do those in a different video. And, um, and, you know, one on Cakewalk, one on Pro Tools. That way people, um, I think I got a few videos already out there with uh, understanding Pro Tools. And uh, um, I think that uh, if we continue to do that, we'll, we'll get some more going on. So let's jump into uh, um, the DAW here and, and get the strings going. All um, right. So I am... Um, um, there we go and share. Uh, so as, as Weston mentioned, I'm using a product called Sonar uh, by Cakewalk. Uh, it's actually now um, owned by a company called BandLab. It used to be owned by Gibson. And before that, I think the actual Cakewalk company owned it. It's changed hands a few times. But you know, the DAW is, not as important as knowing your DAW. Uh, so you know, what I've got here uh, is some strings, and I went ahead and, and just wrote a quick, uh, a quick theme here, and you'll see it here in MIDI. Um, and um, this is going to launch my string pad or my string sample. Uh, I use samples from a company called Spitfire. Um, and again, you know, I'm, I'm not advocating anyone in particular, but what I do want to advocate is if you're going to write, you know, orchestral music, um, to, you know, within your means, try to get the best sounding samples of strings that you can get. Uh, this set is our samples from the London Contemporary Orchestra. Um, and, uh, Spitfire, they do a good job at, recording samples with very fine microphones and very fine studios and concert halls and things like that. 
So uh, within your means. And I say that because you know, sometimes you can hit these websites and these samples, they'll be like 1500 bucks US and you know, that can get pretty pricey. So these techniques though, that I'm gonna show you, they apply to anything. You know, it doesn't matter the sample that you're using. Uh, it's the technique that, that you, you apply to it that's going to, to do the, the work and the heavy lifting. Uh, so this is uh, a section of violins and a section of basses and cello. Um, and I've, what I've done is you know, I've just simply split. So I've got my basses and cellos down in, the, in my left hand, and then my violins are up in my right hand. Um, and so, what I've done, and um, I'm probably, I'll blink this out once so you know, we don't hear it, um, but I've written some, some expressiveness or some dynamics into the string line. Um, and you can see that happening here. You see, I've got dynamics and expression. Mm -hmm. And I'm able to teach it a MIDI move on my keyboard. Now, you could also use like a, an automatic, you know, auto fader type thing, which I use this, these a lot because uh, it feels, you know, it feels like a console. So, you know, it, you might like these better than, than turning a wheel on, on your keyboard, for example. But you'll notice what I've done is you'll see the dynamics and the expression all moving together as I turn um, a modulation wheel on my keyboard. So as I play, and the harder you hit down, the the more louder it gets, right? Well, that's the wheel. Um, that's making it louder. Okay. Uh, yeah, the, the attack on, on the... So it's kind of working like a, the velocity kind of annoy? Yeah, it, it's actually, um, it's, the modulation is assigned, my, my mod wheel is assigned to the dynamics and expressions of the strings. Now velocity is just the attack on the string. You know, how hard that, that that string player has you know, bowed down on the string. Um, and, and I don't do, like typically, the, what I do is I typically keep my velocities very level. So I don't get a lot of unusual hits and things as I'm playing on the piano. Um, I will, after I've written a line of melody is when I will go back and then draw in or use my wheel to to overwrite um, expression and velocities. Um, so here, you, know, you can see my velocities, they're you know, pretty much the same. And a lot of times what I'll do is I'll just level all my velocities just so um, I have like a clean starting point. Now here with my modulations of expression and strings, I, I drew that in. Uh, or I played it with, with my, my keyboard wheel. Um, so if we were to just take this away completely. So now I'm just, at, I'm at one volume. So when I play, it's not changing volume, it's just keeping it the same volume. It's, just it's kind of like, Taking the fader and making the fader go up and down in volume is what you're, what you're applying, right? Right, which, you know, that's, you know the beauty of you know, one of these is like you got your faders. So, you know, that's, I mean, that's okay. You know, that's, that's a nice sounding, um, you know, a little melody line. Um, but... You ever just draw I, it in with your pencil too sometimes? Yeah, you you can do that. Um, as a matter of fact, you know, I, I might do. I'll, I'll do that so you can kind of see it happen. 
because again, I want to get a little more lifelike. And I know a violin player and a cello player, they don't just play the same volume note as they go. Um, it's just, you know, it, it's, it's too robotic. Uh, they, you know, they have a sense of feeling for the music, so they're going to let it grow and diminish and grow and diminish. Um, so what I'll do first is just write it with my, and I don't think you can see it. Yeah, you can see the wheel. So here's my wheel over here. Um, and you'll kind of hear uh, what it does. Yeah, we can definitely hear where where it got quiet. It kind of really faded out, and then it came back in and got louder. Yeah, very, so, very so, crescendo style. Yeah, it, it makes it more interesting to the ear than just everything at, at the same level. Um, and uh, and and what's nice about you know working in in digital audio workstations is if I don't like how that started off right there. I can just redraw it if I want, you know, you know to, to do whatever. Now, you got to be careful when you're drawing things. As you can see right here, I've got a huge jump in level. Oh, yeah. It, you know, that could be a little disconcerting to the ear. <coughs> Excuse me. Allergies. You just got just to gotta get a lot of, you know, select it and how you redo it, you know. Yeah, and I think that's why I like using the mod the modulation wheel, is I've got that kind of control, you know, over the movement, so it's smoother. So you can see how that drew that a lot smoother than I can draw with my hand with a pencil, mm -hmm. uh, which is why you'll see so many. You know, composers working with their mod wheel or working, you know, with their their auto faders and things like that. Uh, so, you know, that's uh, that's the the basic concept is is kind of moving away from a static, same level violin line or cello line or horn line and give it dynamics because that's what makes music interesting. And that's what makes makes it human sounding, you know, that somebody actually you know, sat there and, and played it. Um, and and it, it translates, you know, almost subconsciously uh, to the listener um, in that, you know, they may not be well acquainted with orchestras and how violinists, you know, apply their technique to to the violin, but they're acquainted with the sound of a symphony or a sound of an orchestra playing um, and so they're, you know, they're sonically acquainted with the nuances and the subtleties of expression and dynamics, even though they may, may not be able to, you know, articulate about it in their mind, it makes sense to them. So as music producers and composers, we want to try to emulate that so that we're you know, falling into that comfort zone of, of how they're used to listening to uh, you know, orchestral music. Um, so, you know, and this is, you know, a, a simple technique, but, you know, one that, that needs to be paid attention to uh, when, when writing music, um, you know, is, you know, having a MIDI controller or a, a, a fader port style controller to where you can, you can either play it and, and give it expressiveness which, you know, I'll do that a lot. You know, I'll just... You 
And when I'm recording it, I'll lay down the expressive sounds with the mod wheel at the same time. See, my, uh, my keyboard doesn't have the mod wheel on. I broke the one I had that had the mod wheel on it, so I ended up having to get rid of it. So, so I, gotta, I have to go with my fader. Uh, okay, you've got a fader you can do it with, yeah. Or, or what I'll do is, since my, the volume of the thing, I can go up and down. Yeah. I can, I'll, uh, I'll take and just take my mouse and group the ones that I want to go together and just have them go together with the other ones with the mouse. So that way my mouse ends up being the, the fader too. Just, right, yeah. just knowing my DAW in that situation as we get back to knowing the DAW. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, and regardless of, of how, how you do it or I do it or you know, the next composer does it, what we're doing is we're creating dynamics and expressiveness in, in the sound. Uh, which you know separates you know, separates artists from other artists, um, and you know, and how they how they create that expressive and, and dynamic sound, um, yeah, and and it, it translates into all genres. I mean, from blues to pop to reggae to electronic to to you know deep house orchestras, e everyone's using dynamics, uh, you know, in their music. It's just a, a matter of you know, of how you apply the technique. And it's, a, it's a, an important technique, I feel, uh, especially when working with, with orchestra music, uh, because you know, string sections uh, are, are played by, by humans, and you know, they have a feel for how they're gonna play that, that piece of, that line of melody. Yeah. So that's, a, that's the short version of, uh, of applying that technique now there's you know other things we mentioned in, in a previous video about you know creating a room that everything sounds good inside uh that becomes particularly important when you're working with orchestra music um uh, and that you know you're, you're working in a in a in a, uh, in a room or a reverb environment that makes sense for that electronic orchestra that's that's playing so that even at another subtle level of the subconscious it sounds more natural to someone listening uh, because most of the time when we've gone to a classical concert we've been in, in a, a in an arena or a, a concert hall or something like that and all of those walls and structures that are in that in that room with us are are sculpting the sound and so as music producers we need to try to emulate that but that that will be a good one for another another show especially when it comes to something like rock drums rock drums you're rock wanting that in a nice tight studio room versus a big concert room because the because if you put them in the concert room they'll have too much reverberation versus what you need for the tight reverberation with the drums on a rock, on a, I mean, it just all depends on the genre that you use that reverberation with. Right. And uh, I think those those can be some really good keys that we'll get into later in some other future videos together. Um, yeah. Well, thanks for tuning in, everyone. I'm glad that Tony and I can get in deep into these samples with you, and we're going to be uh, pushing forward with the. Uh, um, more more of these videos here we're going to try to do this uh on a monthly basis for you that way we can get you some content to uh be able to produce music and we can create a good uh songwriting team here at audio star productions and and those people who uh use cakewalk or pro tools and use the uh plugins that we use will have an idea of how to kind of navigate with them and that's kind of what we're kind of doing here is to try to create that strong songwriting team for producers here with Audio Star Productions because we're going to be bringing more artists on with us. But Tony and I just don't want any particular type of artists to, to uh, join us in our, um, our team. We're looking for people who want to put in the work and, and people who want to, you know, write music all the time kind of like tony and i do and and tony's gonna have his his uh little bit of two cents on 
on some of that too. What are we, what other things are we looking for in artists, Tony? Um, yeah, I, I think definitely a collaborative spirit. Um, you know, wanting to to work together. Uh, you know, we all have different strengths and weaknesses. Uh, you know, we have different uh, libraries and things like that. Like you know, you and I, you had sent me some some MIDI files, um, and you wanted you know, the, uh, the horn section from my Spitfire library applied, you know, to that. Um, so, you know, that's just kind of, kind of an example of, of that collaborative spirit. Um, you know, and, you know, you, it's not like we want the hugely successful people, but if you've, you know, had successes, we'd love to hear about those, you know, how, how, you know, how we achieve successes in, in writing music for television and film. Um, but I think, you know, just as a base, what would be nice to have in this group are, you know, artists, you know, you know, with, with a collaborative spirit, you know, who want to work together and support each other and, you know, be, you know, accountable. You know, it, it's, you know, it's really good to have somebody to kind of bounce ideas off of in a safe environment, you know, where you're not just going to get attacked of, oh, no, that's the most horrible string sound I've ever heard in my life. But, you know, more of a, you know, hey, you know, maybe if you sculpted that string sound like this or this or that, you know, you might achieve that end goal. So right. A supportive environment as well. People who don't take uh, feedback on a grain of salt, more of a feedback yeah. and, and like, hey, you know, this would sound better if you tried to apply this a technique a little different here, maybe clean this up a little bit, you know, because... You know, Tony and I send each other music back and forth and, and, and let each other know what sounds good and what's not sounding good all the time. Yeah, I mean, and, and at, all, at all stages, you know, from creation, mix, to, uh, to um, mastering, which, you know, we kind of being independent artists, we kind of wear all those hats, um, you know, from, from recording to mixing to mastering. Yes. And we're looking for people who are kind of our self promoter too, in a way, because if we, if we always are the ones putting in all the work on, on trying to get our music out there, um, then, then, uh, you know, you're not helping in on, on what's going on. Cause Sony and I, we are posting on social media about our, uh, projects on, on audio star productions all the time. And, uh, we're trying to push forward with this as we go because, that's the only way we can really go is reach out and, and try to share the love because when someone comes and checks out your music on audio star productions, they're not only going to just check out your music, they're going to check out other people's music. Mm -hmm. And, and so your album being next to my album is where if I send someone there to check out my album, they're going to check out your album too. Cause it's just right there. I mean, yeah. It's plain and simple. It's just how things go, and and then I'll share. They'll share your. I'll share your album. You'll share my album. That's how those those things go. And and there's ways of getting around and and navigating the internet to find these people. Yeah, and that's what you know. A lot of you know they're called music supervisors or sync supervisors. You know, they're looking for a one stop shop where you know they know the music's going to be there that they want. And they know that they can, you know, trust the, the artists and producers to create the content that they want, you know, which is, you know, you see the, the big, you know, the bigger guys out there, you know, song trader and, you know, people like that, you know, doing essentially a similar thing. We're doing it on a grassroots level, you know, really trying to, to connect with other artists and connect with music supervisors. Yes, but we're not we're not trying to be like Song Trader where we have a million songwriters. We just want a handful of of you guys. And um, I had I brought in this guy named Brandon Martinez. Who I'm sp supposedly going to be having a uh, video coming out here in the next week, com conversating with him. He's kind of more into the rock metal techno, and uh, um, we'll be introducing him into writing with us. I met him on another, on a uh, sync Academy program that he had, that he was on. He's a, he's a producer. Yeah. I mean, that's, I mean, that's, you know, that's exactly, you know, how I see audio star you know, production is you know, a collaboration 
you know, just like that. Mm -hmm. I mean, even, you know, if you're not, maybe you're, you're a filmmaker, come on board with us, you know, right. uh, you know let's, you know, let, let, let's work within the group with the filmmaker and, and, uh, and, and the musicians here. Uh, but I like it. Yeah. Film. film sucks. Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, yeah. You, know, you learn that in all of your media classes, you know, you take mm -hmm. one of the greatest movies ever and remove all the sound, it, it becomes really flat. Uh, but I like that idea of, you know, being a boutique, you know, what they call a boutique library, you know, a few artists creating music, um, but can create a, a large spectrum of different styles of music from, you know, shred metal to orchestral to, uh, you know. And be to hip hop to. Yeah, love to get some hip hop artists, you know, in the mix. You know, Tony and I might have to go for go, try it out just to see if we can get some tracks out. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> but it, it might it might not be the be best hip hop there is. Yeah, nah. uh, you know, I've seen people uh, write some horrible hip hop and it get placed on on some films, and you're just like, wow, how'd that cue get put there? Yeah, I mean, I think it comes down a lot to you know networking, which you know this is what this is. You know, we're creating a network. Mm -hmm. uh, and so uh, we move forward and audio star productions is the place to go and to that's right to. we're a great team and we're looking for more people to collaborate with us so i'm going to jump on this this website real quick again one more time to show uh everyone where to go on our website to collaborate with us and in this this time i'm going to show where music um supervisors and film et makers can collaborate with us directly. Okay, so here we go. All right, so we're here at the Audio Star Productions website, and uh, um, what I can, what we can do is hit the uh, collaborations tab again, and we're going to scroll down. And this time, we don't have any posts in there yet because we're a fairly new production company. So this right here, not just uh, music supervisors and filmmakers can post in here. Other songwriters that want to collaborate with us are saying, hey, we need this kind of cue. You can come here and collaborate with us and create a conversation. The conversation will hit the back button here. Looks kind of like this. It's, it's pretty easy, simple, kind of like a, like a social media post that you can, you can click in and right here. And on this here, you can come in and like it, share it on Facebook, get the, the link, watch this video of me doing some. Hey, what's going on, everyone? What's some right here, there? see? I mean, you can post content in here. This one right here was on ML4000. So this is kind of how our uh, site kind of runs down to where you can collaborate with us. And uh, um, we definitely uh, are welcoming people to post in here, but we don't want you to do any uh, self-promotion posting because that's not really what we're about. We're not here to say, hey, go to our Spotify and hit play on our song. That's not what we're looking for. Well, your your uh, um, post will definitely get deleted really quick. So please don't uh, do any of that. And uh, um, we also have a Facebook group that I'll show you guys real quick. If I can open this up. Boom. Okay. We're going to jump into Facebook. And this group here, right here, we got our group here. This is where we post our Zoom chats. You can come watch us live. It's uh, the Audio Star production discussion group you can come in here please do not do any self-promoting here tony and i if we see that we'll just delete it right away because we do not want to send people to confuse them to a spotify link or a soundcloud link that's going to be um talking about trying to get more viewers and listenings and stuff now if if it was discussion on uh how you could write this song better for the library um, that could be discussed on the page different because then people are going to make a discussion there. We're trying to make a discussion here, not a um, self-promotion. So join us here on our Facebook 
uh, group. We also have a Facebook page that uh, Tony and I control. We're both admins here at this page. We have content that is up. Um, here is a, a video that I just did earlier today with Robert Jetter. He's going to be uh, collaborating with me on some uh, 70s, 80s song ideas for a music library that uh, I'm writing in. And uh, it's, so he's going to be on a, some songwriting with me. Um, so we also have all kinds of things here at the Audio Star Production Facebook page. Um, and uh, uh, we'll get on our, um, we'll get to you on our uh, YouTube page on a different time. So we're going to stop the share and uh, anything you'd like to touch up before we uh, end this call here, Tony? No, just uh, really appreciate uh, being invited along for the ride and uh, hoping to see uh, more people join us as we uh, cruise towards Music Sync. Absolutely. And, uh, and some other videos that I'm going to do in the future, I want to do uh, cover some a uh, how to score inside film and do some film editing itself, show a little bit of film editing. I don't want to give all the tools away on how to do this kind of stuff, but I want to be able to give people an idea how to dive into it and help out at Audio Star Productions. Excellent. Thanks, Weston. Hey, you have a good day, Tony, and we'll see you on next time. All right.